Ya, I'll check my face. That's something to eat a minute ago. Well, not a minute, but I'm terrible for being on camera with a sauce on my face. A little kid. Oh, there's someone behind me. All right, someone behind me. I've up the pace a little bit because there's a. Uh... There was this people behind me and uh, I want to talk on this. So I'm down the same woods I was down the other day, Ashton Hill Woodlands. Um, I guess that's Ashton, Bristol, it might be failing Bristol. So for those that have made comments before over in the States, how they love looking on Google Earth to see where I might be, that's where I am. So Ashton Hill Woodlands. And uh, you can't, can't quite get my accent, that's because I mumble. And uh, sometimes I've got a scar here, look. So sometimes it just, <laughs> it it, sometimes the bottom lip don't want to move as well as it should. So yeah, so I mumble and I'm from the West Country, uh, from Bristol. Um, quite famous in some parts our city and uh, I believe it's where Blackbeard sailed out of our docks and went off for his piracy around the world <laughs> why do we love pirates so much they're such dodgy people but um, that's where I'm from so I'm not actually that far away from um, Avonmouth, Portishead, which is like a coastal area. Avonmouth is a commercial docking area. Portishead is, has commercial docks as well, but they're called, well, they're next to Portbury. That's where you get a lot of new cars and stuff. So yeah, so we're down Ashton Hill Woodlands. Um, it also says Ashton Hill Plantation when you pull up. So um, I'm not sure what they're, I'm not sure the, uh, well, I guess, the reason why it's called a plantation is they kept it as a plantation instead of ripping all the trees down to make boats back in the uh, the days of old when they started deforestation in in the UK. Not that it was probably called the UK back then. It's probably called Sussex, Wessex, Devonshire, you know. So I'm not sure a history of it, but. Uh, But, um, not bad, just, yeah, but no but, that's what Bristolians say, isn't it? If you're interested, watch a show called Little Britain when they do Vicky Pollard. And the Vicky Pollard sketch is a uh, young woman from Norwest, which is uh, from where I'm from. Not from, I'm not from Norwest, I'm from Bristol. So Norwest is a area in Bristol. I can hear people talking behind me, so I'll uh, come back to you when we're in the depths. go off the beaten track off the main track thinking I've never been down here before <laughs> just gonna have a look I might be away from people and that literally as I went off the be beaten track it's about five people just followed me so I'm quite frustrated I'm a bit like fucking leave me alone I might do that gear top review on the golf course I might do that I think I'm gonna do it Get away from the lunatics. There's no way the golf course is open, is it? That's something that's ridiculous as well. Yeah, I'm gonna do it just here. Yeah, nice. Let's go out of the way of people as well. Can anyone see me? Let's go up here.
I really don't want to be known for moaning and groaning. Um, but I really don't want to be near people. And uh, I just knew it was going to be busy-ish anyway, because it's Sunday. And of course we've got lockdown. So, let's put the gear top tent up here. Oh, I see the, micro the microphone's not covered. So let's cover that a bit better. Let's put a tent up here somewhere, away from people. Because no one's going to be walking around the golf course, because I guess it's private. Perfect. And no one's going to be working on it, because it's, it's uh, closed. There's a bit of wind. Let's try and get out of the wind a bit. Uh, let's, let's go over here. Oh, there's people walking around. That's all right. Only a couple. I don't want to get in trouble with... Uh, like, I don't want to... Uh, no, not go down there. I'm not going to pitch a tent on a, the course itself because I was thinking about it then. I thought, yeah, I'll do that. And then I thought, probably not the best ideas because, uh, you know, if someone does come along, they'll be like, and you put it on the golf pitch as well. So, let's go, oh, let's go over here about these rugged, ruggedness. I'll show you a view there, South Bristol. I find one, I'm going to pitch a tent. I'm just going to go for it. Just in here. It's a bit of wind, so it's going to be a true test to uh, can we get the gear top floppy lettuce, or wet lettuce, sorry, non floppy. Um, so, yeah, this, this looks good. And then I can put my, I um, know, oh but the wind. Oh, for goodness sake. I was going to put my hammock up here and have a chill out, but then I'll get cold in the wind. So. Shall I move on? Shall I just... No, I'm going to do the gear top thing here. And then we'll move on back into the woods afterwards. So this looks good so far. I did see a couple walk past me a second ago. Another couple way over there. So hopefully there's not too many people. So let's get unpacked. Um, I'll show you what I got in my pack first. And hopefully we won't see uh, too many. Right, so I need to kind of be... I'm not sure. Hopefully you can see me. Um, yeah, it looks like it looks good. I got your. I think I got your ultra wide. Um, so the first thing for me first is to uh, get this out. I don't even know if I used this. I bought these about three times. Burnt one of them. The other one got nicked. So I have got a knife with me today, which uh, might be used to uh, scrape some um, some. Uh, Scrape uh, some birch bark up to get some dust to start a fire. Um, lighter. I know there's some diehard people out there. We're on the piss a bit. We are. Uh, I think you're an idiot not to to leave home without a lighter. I really do. Um, little compass. Little basic one for little short trips in case you get lost in the woods. A little multi-tool with a spoon with a spork on it. Three GoPro batteries, car keys, inhaler, lip balm, and a whistle. You get into trouble and you're stuck in the woods. I know it sounds stupid and you're like, I ain't gonna use that. Yeah, when you roll your crack crack or roll your ankle and you can't hardly move. So I've got a torch, because uh, if it does get a bit later, obviously I can see. So um Bag of uh, guy rope or uh, I can't remember. I always forget the word. There's a the gear top tent. Bag of um, spare pegs. Cordage. That's the word. Cordage. I got my down jacket. Got a titanium cook pot. A little hammer. A bit of coffee. And I'll show you the rest later. Um, so let's get this tent up. I remember. I don't know the weight of this tent. I think it was on, um, I think I was reading and it was on like, I don't know, 1.6, 1.7. And uh, I've only slept in it once and it flapped around, rot, somewhat rotten in the wind. And um, it wasn't it wasn't great, you know? So. Excuse me breathing. I'm so unfit. Um, 
I was really contemplating like staying in and just sitting on line on the sofa letting my feet repair because my feet I moved a load of records yesterday out of my lockup because I've got to get out of my lockup because the council's taking the building back and I'm selling this huge old air base place to um to uh somebody like Wimpy Holmes or something like that. So that's the um that's the gear top tunnel tent. I had the poles separately because I could put the poles and the tent separately in the pack easier because um, otherwise it takes up so much room. So I have done this before. Let's see if we can do it again. I'm not sure if I unpacked it well or not. I mean packed it up well. Only done this once so I'm not used to it at all. Um, I reckon that and that might beat the back. Yeah, I reckon that's right. It comes with these funky looking pegs, but I can tell you they ain't great. They're quite soft. Um, so I would definitely get, I mean, these cost about eight quid. These are solid and they don't weigh that much more. So before I go any further, I'm going to check underneath if these straps are done up or if they're adjustable in any way, because that might be the cause of the floppiness. There's no way of adjusting those, those that strap anyway. Um, so uh, it's not looking good, is it really? Or the back one. See, how is that so tight there, going across there? Oh yeah. All right. I can't remember if the poles are the same length. No. So that's the tall one. I might be wrong, but I believe this tent is still nylon. It's really quite badly. It seems really quite badly put together when you when you um, put it together. <laughs> you know, it doesn't seem like a. It doesn't seem like, uh, as soon as you start putting it out, you think, this ain't right, this ain't right. <laughs> Let 
Now, if it was raining, there's no way I'd put the inner fly up like, you know, like that. I'd just get it up and then tighten it up, get inside, tighten it up. See, these um, rain zips are really bad, you know. They're really quite poor quality. They get stuck. Look how small the zip is. I'm not sure how long this zip will last. So, you know, that your flies are bigger than this zip. You know, there's that reflectiveness on them, which works in a campsite and a torch, which is quite handy. Um, but so far, I don't really have much good things to say about this tent. You know, <laughs> it seems a bit mean, doesn't it? But it's the truth, you know? That's why Chris gave it to me. So I thought I'd try it out and see if I a keeper or not. Because I'm not going to put myself into danger in a tent. Right. Yeah, I think the poles are slightly too long. Look at that. See, it won't go any wider than that because of that strap underneath. It's really quite bad. It's really quite bad, you know. Like this. This is the third time I put this tent up. And probably the last. Yes, oh, come on. Shaking like a cracker in the chemist, I wasn't. Oh, worn out now. Yeah, so you can see why it's called the floppy lettuce, or the wet lettuce, sorry. But I, I, I think these tent poles are too long. Um, might be wrong. They could do with a trim, I think. But there's, the thing is, if you tighten it there, which makes the tunnel tighter, the front goes flappy. If you tighten the, the front, the back goes flappy. So I reckon this was a bit of a, I reckon this wasn't made right. Because there ain't no reviews on YouTube. I mean, there's a gear top like a factory showreel of it. But, I mean, look at it flopping. Imagine that at real high winds. You'd be in, you'd be in a whole lot of trouble. Um, yeah, flopping. I mean, I might... I don't know, I was going to put some guidelines on to see if it goes better, but I, I don't think, I do think I'd be wasting my time, to be honest. So, I think I would pretty much 
unless I pulled down to nah I think pretty much is a waste of time this tent I mean, it's all right in a campsite stick your kids in for a night or two or five but you don't want to go backpacking with this look at it just falling down also it gets so close to the floor you can adjust it obviously but naturally it gets so close to the floor the condensation was horrendous in it when I slept in it last and that was down the campsite uh, down in uh, North Devon look at it flopping look so personally I wouldn't recommend this tent um, so I'm probably going to whack it on the bay and get silly money for it I don't mean like silly high I mean silly low money for it because to be honest you know I'll be totally honest with somebody it's up to them if they think they can uh, address it and make it better if they want to buy it and if they buy it it's at their own peril <laughs> so so uh the tunnel flap is a bit fiddly as I said the uh it's so small these um zips are so small and uh i don't even remember if there's anywhere to tie it off but there's bound to be isn't there sorry about doing the close-up bit of a molding in the hand see if i can stick you in the drum for a sec oh my god oh. yeah so uh let's see if uh there's anything i can really tie feels like a not really that's crap in it crap that is This thing, this zip is crap, man. Really bad. I'd hate to be stuck out in a storm in this. So, it's there. Not really. There's nothing to hold it up. Look, nothing really there is there to hold that up. Um, so, what I'll probably do is somehow let's see if I can play around with this. Somehow get that in there, perhaps, and then do that kind of like that. So it kind of keeps it in a little bit perhaps i didn't even do that i just shoved it in so yeah that's not the end of the world doing that um let's see what it's like inside so uh bug netting looks pretty good looks like it can keep out the midges it does look like it can keep out midges but i've had tents that don't keep out midges so you've got to laugh um i mean look at it inside it's all flopping down you know so even if i pull this it's not really much better and the floor alert is off and that ain't me that's not me so uh so yeah the netting's come right down look how floppy it is well, i'm not grumbling for free um but to make this work i think you need to cut those floor straps um but that's what keeps it tight so but it's not tight is it cut the floor uh, i would cut the floor straps straps and add in some adjustable um connectors so you can pull this floor out better um if i was going to keep it but to be honest why would i want to keep this sorry gear top it's a thumbs down from me um I know that it's really waterproof because i've been in it in a rainstorm on on the campsite for when i woke up in the morning uh two nights i spent so first night was a rainstorm second night it was nice and it's quite hot and the tent because it's been a tunnel tent it's quite warm as well the ventilation isn't amazing there's two one at the front one at the back the tent itself is really low to the ground as i was saying before um so you get a wicked build up of condensation so um staying um in the campsite when i woke up it was dripping onto this black netting uh, the inner tent and it was coming down on my sleeping bag so of course as you should easy every time leave no trace so there's no trace of uh, me being there apart from a couple of holes in the floor there's uh, south bristol over there <laughs>